हेलो एवरीवन आई एम शिवानी एंड वेलकम टू सिविल सीरीज सो एज यू सी अ थंबनेल दिस इज अ पार्ट थ्री ऑफ थ्योरी ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर शॉर्ट नोट्स सो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट द ट्रस्ट एंड हियर दिस वीडियो इज ऑलमोस्ट कवर्ड बाय अ ट्रस्ट एंड वन मोर चैप्टर विच इज स्टेबिलिटी और अनस्टेबिलिटी एंड दीज पॉइंट आर कवर्ड इन दिस वीडियो सो let's start with the video stability or instability there are three type of stability or instability in that first one is in that first one is externally externally stable or unstable okay externally stable or unstable so externally unstable and stable there are two condition first one is linear stability or instability okay and second is angular angular stability or instability okay so in case of linear stability if all external reactions if all external reactions are parallel to each other okay then this structure is externally unstable okay if parallel if all reactions are parallel then externally unstable if all reactions are not parallel to each other then that structure is externally stable okay for example this is simply supported beam okay roller support at first end and roller support at second end okay this is one of the simply supported beam with two roller supports so the roller support is with the vertical reactions and both the vertical reactions are parallel to each other okay if you extend this then both the vertical reactions are parallel to each other so this structure is externally unstable okay and similarly in case of angular stability or instability if all reactions are concurrent to each other concurrent to each other then that structure is externally unstable okay concurrent means what that all reactions are meet at single point okay meet at single point or same point then that is the concurrent and if all reactions are concurrent then that structure is externally unstable okay for example this is simply supported beam with roller support at one end and take here a inclined roller support inclined roller support okay so in this beam in this particular beam the a reaction and b reactions are not parallel to each other so this is linearly stable so this is linearly stable okay but both the reactions if we extend this then both the reactions meet at some point after extending it meet at some point okay so both the reactions are not concurrent to each other both the reactions are concurrent to each other okay both the reactions are concurrent to each other that's why this structure is externally unstable structure okay then next b is internally internally unstable or stable structure okay if member provided okay there are number of members here one member is there if this is a frame okay if this is a frame so in the frame this is first member this is second and this is third member okay if member provided if member provided is less than member required member required then that structure is internally unstable internally unstable okay and next condition is if member provided is greater than or equal to member required then this is condition of internally stable structure internally stable structure okay then next condition is then third is then third is overall stability overall stability 
or instability okay so this overall stability is based on external and internal stability or instability okay if the structure is externally stable if the structure is externally stable and internally and internally unstable okay internally unstable then overall structure is then overall unstable okay next if structure externally stable and internally stable then the structure is overall stable overall stable okay then next third if structure is externally unstable externally unstable and internally and internally stable then the structure is overall unstable okay and fourth is if structure is externally if structure is externally unstable and internally unstable then this is overall stable no no this structure is not overall stable this structure is also overall unstable okay so uh, only condition is here that if both external internally are stable then only that overall structure is stable so here we will see about the next topic from truss which is truss and truss is a structure which is made by a number of triangles and on the truss the loading is act only on the joint and uh, the truss structure always carry axial load the truss structure truss structure always carry axial load okay and there are few types of these trusses depend upon the different criteria in that first is perfect truss okay then next is redundant truss redundant truss and last one is deficient truss okay we'll see the three of the trusses one by one and on the basis of classification there are two types first is 2d or plain truss then next is 3d second 3d or space truss okay here we see only about the 2d truss so in case of 2d truss first truss is simple truss simple truss then second one is complex truss and third is compound truss compound truss okay so these are the three types of trusses and we will see these three trusses one by one so here the analysis of determinate structure so first in case of analysis of determinate structure type of trusses will discuss okay type of trusses so there are three type of trusses perfect truss redundant truss and next is deficient truss okay first condition if ds value means static indeterminacy is equal to 0 second if ds is greater than 0 and third condition is if ds is less than 0 okay there are three conditions we'll see the three conditions one by one here okay first ds is equal to 0 means member provided is equal to member required member provided is equals to member required how so by the formula m is equal to 2j minus 3 if this 2j minus 3 if this 2j minus 3 is equal to the member provided then this condition is followed okay if this condition happens then that structure is determinate that structure is determinate and stable structure okay that structure is determinate or stable structure okay and if the structure determinate and stable and if member provided are equal to member required m is equals to 2j minus 3 and ds value is equal to 0 if all the four conditions if all the four condition follows okay these all are depend on each other if all follows then this 
truss is known as perfect truss this known as perfect truss okay the next condition is if ds is greater than 0 if ds is greater than 0 then member provided is greater than member required okay obviously and the next members are greater than 2j minus 3 j is the number of joint m is the member or member of number of members if this condition happen then that structure is indeterminate then that structure is indeterminate and stable indeterminate and stable if this condition follows then that truss is redundant truss that truss is redundant truss or this truss is also known as over stiff over stiff truss okay this truss is also known as over stiff truss then next is ds is less than 0 if ds is less than 0 then member provided is less than member required member provided is less than member required and that number of members are less than 2j minus 3 then that structure is determinate that structure is determinate and unstable okay if this condition follows then that truss is known as deficient then that truss is known as deficient truss okay so these are the three trusses and these are the conditions to know the type of truss okay so this is the analysis of determinate and indeterminate trusses the next method of analysis of determinate structure okay so there are four method to analyze the determinate structure first method is method of joint next is method of section third is graphical willowed moors method and last one is bar chain method okay so here in this two methods are majorly used so first is method of joint and next is method of section okay so we'll see the two methods one by one then first method is method of joint this method of joint is used when this method of joint is used when force are to be force are to be calculate force are to be calculate in each and every in each and every member okay if force are to be calculated in each and every member then we use the method of joint in that to calculate the external reaction to calculate the external reaction and second to calculate the internal reaction to calculate the internal reaction we use here for external reaction calculation we use static equilibrium equation and for internal reaction calculation we use joint equilibrium equation okay so in case of static equilibrium equation there are three unknown values are there or three equations are there to find out the unknown values first one is summation of f of x equal to 0 second is summation of f of y equal to 0 then next is moment or the summation of moment equal to 0 then joint equilibrium equation summation of f of x equal to 0 summation of f of y equal to 0 so these are the two equations here and these are the three equations here as a static equilibrium equation and here joint equilibrium equation is used the next method is method of section so this method in that how to choose section first we'll decide how to choose a section to calculate the unknown forces first section passing through those members first section passing through those members those member in which forces are to be forces are to be calculated okay next section cut each section cut three unknowns should be formed three unknowns are to be formed and third is section is vertical horizontal incline and zigzag okay these kind of sections you can form then this method of section is used when used when the forces are to be calculated the forces are to be calculated for 
some member for some members or one member okay for one member and for some members you can use the method of section but in case of method of joint you can use that method when forces are to be calculated in each and every member okay so here to calculate the external reaction to calculate external reaction and to calculate the internal reaction for both calculation we use here a static equilibrium equation static equilibrium equation there are three equations in that summation of f of x equal to 0 summation of f of y equal to 0 and summation of moment equal to 0 okay so this is how the method of section then concept to identify number of zero force member in truss there are two concepts first concept is if on the joint two forces are act okay this is first force this is second force two forces are act and on the same joint third force is act okay on the same joint third force is act and if there is a no external force acting on this joint no external force acting on this joint okay this is important no external force no external force acted okay then and then only this force or this member is turned to be zero okay then and then only this force or this member is turned to be zero the next condition is if these kind of two forces okay this kind of if this angle is increased by some amount then it's okay and if this kind of a members are acted in the truss and no external reaction okay here the same condition applies no external reaction acted no external reaction acted then and then only both the forces are zero okay both the force members are turned to be zero here so these are the two important concept to identify the zero force member in the truss so this video is all about the truss and the one more chapter which is stability or unstability and i think uh, in the next video we'll cover the remaining part and uh, okay so we'll wind up the theory of structure in the next video and thank you for watching this video